so much. If you guys stay, uh, keep standing up and singing, I might not, uh, and clapping, I might not make this 7 o'clock flight. But uh, it really is a great honor to be here. Thank you so much, Chairman Keene. But before I get started, there's a special young man that has come up on this stage with me. His name is Sergeant Jason Alban from Annandale, Virginia. He has served in Iraq with the 2nd Infantry Division during the time period of the surge. He now serves at the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, where he now trains those men and women who guard the tomb of the unknown soldier. So, before I say a word, I want to introduce to you one of the America's best, Sergeant Jason Alvin. Thank you. We don't have much time. Can I just say something real quick? The reason I'm here is because I have a bigger fear for my future than I did of the fear that I had back in Baghdad. And the reason I'm here is because I believe in the Colonel. So thank all of you and God bless America. Chairman Keene, incoming chairman, Mr. Cardenas, it's awesome to see another South Floridian here. And to each and every one of you out there, what a year it has been. And congratulations because your hard work and efforts paid off. Thanks to your calls, your walks, and standing on street corners waving flags and signs, we have a GOP House majority. Within that House majority, we have the largest ever conservative conference that they have ever seen. And also, we have 87 new freshmen, a historic achievement that you enabled to happen. And you also closed the gap in the U.S. Senate. You made your voices heard and have reminded Washington, D.C. that this is a representative democracy made up of the consent of the governed. You endured the relentless and hostile attacks from the liberal left, such as being called racist. And perhaps they should see who is standing here as your keynote speaker. thing was, you stood by your principles. In the face of these horrific politics of character assassination, you said that you would not allow your country to be cast into a perpetual dusk, nor remain silent while the sun set on the ideals of American exceptionalism. And I, too, had to endure the politics of ugliness because the liberal progressive agenda offers no viable solutions for our republic. Countless name calling, saying that you're a member of an all white motorcycle gang, being called the worst person in the world five or six times, and he got fired for it. <laughs> Having your personal friends, such as a very dear friend of mine, South Florida radio talk show host jo Joyce Kaufman, attack. The DCCC has already started running attack ads against me, and I've barely been sworn in about 35 days. The Cook Political Report said that I was one of the most vulnerable congressmen even before I had been sworn in. And this past week, the Politico put me out as one of the top most vulnerable representatives. Well, I've got to tell you something. Standing here before each and every one of you, 
I don't feel so vulnerable, do I? But how is it? How is it that we, in this past year, stood against such a vile onslaught? It's very simple. I go to Isaiah, chapter 54, and verse 17, where it states, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That's where faith comes into being so important. But even more important, even more important than your faith, as Mr. Keene talked about, it's an oath. It's an oath that each and every one of us believe in. It's an oath that I took for the first time on the 31st of July, 1982, as a young second lieutenant back at the University of Tennessee. It's an oath. Go Rocky Top. It's an oath <laughs> that I took again on the 5th of January of 2011. It's an oath that has no statute of limitations. If the, it's an oath that we pledge, such as Sergeant Auburn, that we will lay down our lives for this great constitutional republic. See, last year on this stage, I gave the oath to be a guardian of the conservative principles and values that make America the greatest nation that the world has ever known. But today, as we have gathered here on this day, on this momentous occasion, I believe that we are standing on the verge of the dawn of a new America. If we adhere to those fundamental conservative principles and those constitutional ideals. See, conservatism is the interaction between life, society, and governance to promote the advancement of the individual by adhering to the basic constitutional republical, republic principle of liberty. Alexis de Tocqueville said, while democracy seeks equality in liberty, socialism seeks equality in restraint and servitude. Abraham Lincoln once asked the question, what is conservatism? Is it not the adherence to the old and tried against the new and untried. Well, I would say this if President Lincoln was standing here today. Liberal progressivism evolved after our Constitution. It has been tried. It has repeatedly failed all over the world. So why would we think that it can be successful here in our United States of America? Thank you. So here today, let us be reminded of the pillars of conservatism, which will lead us to the new dawn of a new America. The first one is very simple. It is effective and efficient constitutional government. For Thomas Jefferson said, my reading of history convinces me that most bad government results from too much government. Therefore, let me ask you a simple question. Do you believe that America can survive as a bureaucratic nanny state? No. And you're absolutely correct. And I appreciate the emphasis over there. <laughs> the framers of our Constitution, they had one true intent, was to put a restraining order on big government. See, fiscal conservatism is a derivative of constitutional government which understands its right and proper mandates. And that's why next week we're going to cut $100 billion of spending off of the federal budget. We cannot continue on with the record deficits that we have seen in the past three years, $1.42 trillion, $1.29 trillion, $1.48 trillion, approaching a $15 trillion debt, $5 trillion of new debt in the past four years. 
PBN for news that affects America. Join us on our live show at pushbacknow.com.